Sawati Krop, and good afternoon. Welcome to the first in a series of special programs about Thai cuisine in the United States. My name is Brian Hoffman, and I am a guide here with Turnstile Tours. And these programs uh, that we are presenting, there's six of them, today being the first, are sponsored and in partnership with Thai Select USA. Uh, now, a little bit about us. Our focus as a tour company is to give a true sense of place uh, and connect with organizations and communities whose stories have not been told as often. So that is why we have teamed up with Thai Select to tell these stories of Thai chefs who have influenced and changed the perception of Thai cuisine in the United States. Uh, we'll be hosting 12 chefs from cities across the United States to share their stories uh, over the course of six programs. Uh, and we'll get cooking demos from most of them as well. So hope you're hungry. Um, before we uh, uh, kick off the program, I do wanna go through a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if this is your first time using Zoom or if you need a refresher, there's um, some ways to interact with us. And we would love to hear your questions, your feedbacks, your ideas, uh, share some stories, maybe share your favorite Thai dish or uh, if you've eaten at any of the restaurants we're gonna talk about today, any stories about that as well. And the best way to do that and communicate with us is through the chat box. And you can uh, click below. And um, my colleague, um, Andrew is in the background uh, monitoring that and he's gonna send any of those questions for myself or the two chefs today um, to me. So please drop your questions, your thoughts, your memories uh, in there. And if you wanna practice now, we'd love to hear where you're joining us from. And uh, do a quick hello. Two ways of doing that. You can send uh, comments directly to myself, Andrew, uh, and the others behind the scenes by pushing all panelists. Or if you want everyone viewing today, um, you can uh, click all panelists and attendees. So uh, look forward to hearing your questions and comments as we go along. Uh, also wanted to let you know that we do have closed captioning enabled and my uh, colleague Stefan is behind the scenes typing away. So you can follow along by clicking closed captioning below if you're hard of hearing or deaf or English is not your first language, that is a great way to read along with us as well. So uh, before we uh, bring on our two chefs today, uh, the theme, uh, I do wanna tell you a little more about what we have uh, coming up because we do these virtual programs pretty regularly and we have some upcoming programs uh, with Turnstile Tours working with our partners here in New York. And um, uh, so Saturday, September 19th, we are gonna have a discussion with filmmaker um, Teresa Lung, whose uh, father was a prisoner of war during World War II and is the subject uh, of this film uh, that she will be screening. So uh, please join us on Saturday. That is a free program. Um, and then uh, coming up for Climate Week, we are doing three very special programs. Um, as you can see here, Lower Manhattan Coastal Resilience, Resiliency. Uh, we are also gonna be talking with a woodworker who uses sustainable um, wood. Uh, on September 22nd. And then on September 24th, we will be visiting Prospect Park and learning about what they are doing to help with the climate change uh, issues happening. Uh, we also, as I mentioned earlier, have some upcoming Thai related programs. We're doing six in all. And the next ones coming up uh, are next week, Monday, September 21st. We will be talking to two chefs, one of who operates a restaurant in Thai town in Los Angeles uh, and has quite a few Thai diners at her restaurant and one who cooks in a area where there's less of a Thai community and has uh, educated lots of diners to Thai cuisine in Arizona. So that will be interesting learning about their different stories and their different approaches. That's Monday, September 21st. And then the following Monday, we will be focusing on two of the four regions of Thailand and we will be meeting chefs uh, both in Chicago and New York to discuss Northern and Southern Thai cuisine. So please join us for those as well. Um, today though, uh, the two chefs we're gonna be meeting uh, are um, two that have been working in this country and owned restaurants here for, for many decades and have seen the changes in the perception of Thai cuisine. Uh, first, we're gonna meet Chef Chai Siriyarn, who uh, runs Marnie Thai restaurant in San Francisco, California. Uh, and he will also be doing a cooking demo for us. And then following him, we will be meeting Chef Nongkrin Dax, uh, who uh, owns Thai Basil Restaurant in Chantilly, Virginia, outside of Washington, DC. Uh, both award-winning chefs who have written cookbooks and appeared on television and news and all of that. So very, very exciting to hear their stories and both will be preparing dishes for your uh, viewing pleasure. Unfortunately, we can't bring the dishes to you, but there will be opportunities to 
um, to, to find their recipes as well. So maybe you can make them at home. Uh, but before we do uh, meet them, uh, I do wanna talk a little bit more about gastro diplomacy, which is the theme of this program today. Uh, and we're gonna talk about what Thailand has done. Uh, so where is Thailand? Many of you probably know it is in Southeast Asia, uh, but there it is right here. Um, and there are four geographic regions of Thailand and uh, um, the uh, culinary uh, uh, landscape sort of represents those four cuisines. Uh, and we will be discussing those more in depth in future um, uh, programs. Uh, but there it is in Southeast Asia, bordered by Laos, uh, Myanmar, and Cambodia. Uh, uh, but what, what is gastro diplomacy? So, um, gastro diplomacy uh, has uh, been coined by uh, Esquire uh, newspaper. Uh, believe it or not, and it was the first concerted effort um, for a country to help promote its uh, cuisine. Now, there has been um, uh, approach to um, uh, trying to promote a country's art, language, literature, film for a long time, but this was the first time it was specifically about food. And so in 2001, uh, Thailand uh, launched a global Thai campaign as I mentioned, it was the first of its kind. Uh, and the economist was the one that said it was gastro diplomacy. Uh, and just to, to give you a sense of that, in 2001, there were 5,500 Thai restaurants outside of Thailand. Um, and uh, since then, uh, in the US, it has uh, grown by two and a half times as many as it was in 2001, and 10 times the number as it was in 1990. Um, and Thai food has since made a very lasting on the United States, well beyond the immigrant community. Um, today, there are approximately 300,000 Thai Americans, uh, and there is one Thai restaurant for every 56 people of Thai descent in the United States. Um, Thai food is now enjoyed in every corner of the country, but Thailand itself is one of the world's most popular food tourism destinations, and a lot of that has to do with this campaign. And it's been so successful that there have been imitators uh, across the world, um, especially in Asia. Uh, Japan, Malaysia, South Korea, and Taiwan have all launched their own gastro diplomacy efforts. And in 2018, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations released a joint declaration on gastronomy and tourism, uh, emphasizing the importance of food tourism for placemaking and preserving cultural heritage. So uh, it all started in 2001 with Thailand. So we're excited to talk more about how that has happened and how that has changed here in the United States. And to learn more about it, I'm so excited to introduce our first chef today, um, a chef who immigrated here in the 1970s and opened his first restaurant, uh, Marnie Thai in San Francisco in 1986. So uh, here he is, Chef Chai Siriyarn. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Good to see you. Hi, Brian. I'm fine. Thank you. And first of all, thank you for having me in this program. I'm very honored to be a part of this uh, uh, session. And with me, I have our good friend, Jim, who will be helping me with this new normal technology. <laughs> it's new for all of us as well. So Jim will be behind the scenes there. We may hear her talk a little bit as well and share some, some yes, thoughts. Yes, I am. So, so Chai, um, tell us a little bit about how you first learned to cook uh, and, uh, and how you came to the United States. I was born and raised in a family food business in Bangkok, Thailand. I started cooking since I was 12 years old, helping my mother who was a food vendor her whole life after school. So, you know, that's how I got to learn, uh, from, you know, from uh, helping her during my childhood. And, um, and how did you come to open Marnie Thai? What was sort of your stepping stone to that? Since I have had a background and passion for cooking, when I arrived in Los Angeles in 1979, I started working at a Thai restaurant for almost four years prior to moving to settle down and get married with my wife in San Francisco uh, in 1980, 1982. And then uh, while living in San Francisco for four years, I also worked at a few Thai restaurants and uh, my wife and I had a dream to have our own business. So we started our first restaurant, Mani Thai, in 1986 and we opened the second location uh, six, uh, 17 years later. Congratulations. 
And and the name Marnie Tai comes from your wife, is that correct? Right. Yeah, it's uh, resemble my wife's name, Marnie Tai. Yeah, and it actually means um, uh, it has a meaning. Uh, it has like a a precious stone, or you know, a precious gem. That's the meaning of this. This money. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow! I love that. That is speaks to your wife and speaks to the restaurant as well, of course. Yeah. Um, so now when you opened uh, the restaurant, were American diners as familiar with Thai food? I mean, what was that like operating a, a Thai restaurant in, in, the, in the early 80s? Well, uh, during, I mean, we need to educate and uh, teach our customers our food and our cuisine and cultures. You know, I always tell my, my customers, you know, um, the, the health benefits of the, the dish that they will be eating for example, uh, one of the um, appetizers called Mian Kang, that Mian Kang, you know, I will always recommend my customer, the new the comers to try this dish. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the Mian Kang we dish, so, you know, yeah, waiting for the photo. Yeah. I think we have a photo of that we'll pull up. Um, so tell us more about that dish, sorry. Okay, we, we'll this, this is like, yeah. you know, uh, Spanish wrap dish with uh, many fresh uh, herbs on the dish. So like that you go. So, you know, we, I will always tell my customer, you know, uh, the, the health benefits they will get from this dish, they will get vitamin C from the lion bridges, they will get protein from peanuts, uh, calcium for the whole dry shrimps, and uh, toasted coconut, they will get uh, coconut oil with nourish their skin, and also shallot helps, uh, you know, uh, this toxifies the body, your whole body, and ginger is for the digestion. And also, the, the herb sauce is made from the coconut sugar syrup, which is the national sweetness. And inside it's the sauce, it has uh, galanga ginger. These are all natural antidotes, so they will get the, uh, you know, the medicinal properties in this sauce and this dish. And then I even tell them how to eat this dish. They have to wrap and they have to eat the whole thing in one bite. So that's where they will get the, all the combi combination flavors from the ingredients. They cannot just eat you half bite. If they eat only half bite, they only get half of the flavors. So they, they, they have to eat the whole thing in one bite. And, and that's and, been on uh, your menu from the beginning, yeah? Right, yeah, this is one of the, the menu. And, you know, I even, uh, you know, recommend my customers uh, the way we eat our culture, we will, recommend the customer when you take order, try to do family style because you know, this way everybody gets to try everything. And uh, we try to design or recommend the menu that we have the balance of, of flavors and texture within the same meal. And you know, um, some customer asked for a knife, we told them that, you know, Thai people only use a fork and spoon when eating. Uh, we don't need a knife because all the meats are cut into small pieces already, so uh, we don't need a knife. So and then chopsticks are used only for the noodle dishes that are of Chinese origin. So the, you know this is the, the way that we've been educating and you know, teaching our customers uh, our food and culture. So I'm curious. Um, you know, uh, when you first opened, were people as familiar with Thai food? I mean, how do you think the perception has changed um, over the years? Because you've, you've definitely seen it being in business for 35 years. Well, uh, also, when I first arrived in Los Angeles uh, in 1979, I worked at a Thai restaurant. I still remember uh, most of the Thai restaurant owners, they would label their uh, cuisine as Thai and Chinese food at that time because Thai food was not known. And people knew Thai food, knew Chinese food more. So every restaurant would have to say Thai and Chinese food. And then they even had to offer some Chinese dishes on the menu. And also when I uh, opened my restaurant 35 years ago, and I really remember some of the customers, when they came to order the food, they said no cilantro, no fish sauce, and no chili. But now for the past uh, 20 years, uh, Thai food has become one of the most uh, popular world's cuisine. And if you watch the cooking show at uh, Food Channel regularly, you will see uh, a lot of celebrity chefs, they have added Thai ingredients into their cooking, such as lemongrass, 
Ginger, Galango, Cilantro, even Thai chili. And one time I was watching a uh, uh, Chinese cooking show by Chef Man Yan. Yeah, he was named like the father of Chinese cuisine. I saw him was using fish sauce instead of his traditional soy sauce. So this is, this is you know, like something to tell you how Thai food has an influence on other cuisine. Yes, absolutely. And I know you've been a part of that. I mean, you've also, in addition to running the restaurant, you've written a, a cookbook and you uh, uh, often um, run classes as well, right? I, um, or you've participated at the, uh, at the CIA, correct? Can you tell right. us a little bit about that? Um, for the past uh, 20 years, I have been a guest chef at uh, various institutions, such as the Culinary Institute of America at Greystone Campus and also at uh, the, the University of Massachusetts at Amherst Campus, and also at Cornell and Stanford University. I have shared my cuisine and expertise with those with over 400 college chefs attending the uh, yearly chefs conference organized by the UMass Amherst uh, uh, every year for almost 20 years now. And, um, you know, I have been conducting uh, uh, workshops and cooking demonstrations for those attending chefs so that they are able to cook Thai food properly and this way they will also help introduce Thai food across the nation uh, to the newer, uh, to the younger generation or you know some people who are new to, the, to Thai food and one year I one of the attending chefs told me that he is from a, a university in Canada he told me that he sent out a questionnaire asking his 30,000 students in his campus, asking what kind of cuisine he would like to, uh, they would like to have in the campus. And Thai food was number one on the list. So and in the past uh, four years, uh, uh, UMass have been voted as uh, the best campus food in the nation by the Princeton Review for four consecutive years. So I am very proud to say that now UMass Amherst is serving the best Thai food on campuses. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I wish I had gone. I went there. Or go, I can go there now. <laughs> um, um, so um, I know you're going to make a dish for us in a little bit, but, but tell us a little more. Uh, and if anyone, please, who's watching has any questions or has been to Marnie Thai or uh, has any memories they'd like to share, please do drop them in the, in the chat box and I'll, I'll pose any comments or questions to to Chef Chai, um, but but tell us a little more about um, about your menu and how and how it has changed over time. Um, like I said, you've been open thirty five years. I'm sure there's been a few changes. Running the restaurant for over thirty five years, uh, you know, uh, we still you know Thai Mani Thai is still one of the top Thai restaurants in the Bay Area, you know, for the past uh, twenty years and. Uh, we have been trying to maintain our food quality and service in order to be competitive and you know, also change to the, you know, the, uh, the changing of the environment of the menus. And uh, for the past 35 years, I have been serving authentic Thai food, mostly from the central part of Thailand, which is my hometown. And uh, besides this, uh, you know, central Thai cuisine, I have also been introducing the regional cuisines from the north and the southern Thailand, for example, some of the well known north uh, Sun Thai, uh, cow soy noodles, which is the uh, curry uh, noodles, and we have uh, Hang Le curry. And we also, at my restaurant, we also serve uh, Lab Mio, which is a minced pork salad with uh, 14 different kinds of spices, which are very unique uh, in the region. And also from the southern Thailand, we have. Uh, uh, Panang curry. Uh, we have uh, Kua Kling, which is also minced pork dish salted with uh, turmeric and uh, black pepper, which is, you know, like, uh, this is like unique style for the uh, Southern Thai curry paste. And also Masaman curry, which was named uh, number one on the 50 top Thai, top, uh, 50 top best uh, dishes in the world by CNN in the uh, last year, 2019. Besides this uh, northern to the southern part of Thailand, I also I have also been introducing uh, some of the popular street foods such as the coconut pocket, 
which has become one of the best selling and uh, you know my signature dishes at the restaurant right now. Besides, you know, uh, any uh, local seasonal vegetable whenever available, like morning glory and fresh asparagus, I always you know uh, offer this special for my uh, customers. So you know, instead of I mean, besides their regular favorite dishes on the menu. Uh, well, I know there's another dish that uh, is very, very special to you uh, that we'd love to hear, and we've got a photo of it. Uh, Harmok, is that correct? Oh, yes. This Harmok is one of the very uh, special and unique dishes that Thai cuisine has to offer. Um, this recipe has been passed on to me from my grandmother for two generations for over 50 years. My grandmother was born in the ancient city of Ayutthaya, which is the former capital of Thailand, and where the, uh, where the royal Thai uh, originated. And this, uh, you know, one of my uh, weekly specials that I offer uh, at my restaurant regularly. And, and the recipe here is also in your cookbook, is that correct? It is in my cookbook, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, so we will, um, we will definitely post a, a link on how to, how to get a hold of that. Um, uh, and this is what you're gonna make today. I know you were mentioning street food is, is a part of it. And I don't know if a lot of people in the US realize that Pad Thai is street food in Thailand, isn't it? Pad Thai is one of the most popular street food in Thailand. And this is so special because I have won uh, two competitions with this dish, both in Los Angeles and in Thailand at the Thai food exhibition organized by the uh, Thailand Ministry of Commerce. And also Pad Thai was ranked number fifth on the uh, CNN 50 best uh, food in the world in the year 2017 as well. Well, and, and I think most people who've eaten Thai food in the US or anywhere really certainly know, have had Pad Thai, but I don't know if they always know what goes into it, how it's made. So we're gonna get to see you create that, aren't we? Are, are you ready to, to show us how to make pad thai? Sure. Yeah, that would be great. Um, so uh, Chef Chai is heading over to the kitchen. Um, I also should mention that um, Chef Chai also recently won an award. He was voted a uh, Thai Select Rising Star Championship for the West Coast last year. So that is pretty exciting as well. Um, so I don't know if anyone's tried to make pad thai at home, but in um, preparation for this program, uh, Chef Chai shared his recipe with me, uh, and I tried to create his pad thai at home. Uh, I am not the professional. Uh, our chefs today are the professionals, but it was, a, it was a good start, and he's given me some tips. I think there's a photo of me. Uh, we don't have to show it, but there was a photo of me eating the pad thai. There I am uh, one night. It's, he's already told me what I've done wrong, which is, which is really amazing, because I'm going to try again. Uh, but... Um, you can try this yourself uh, if you'd like with Chef Chai's uh, recipe. Uh, does anyone, I know that someone in the chat had mentioned that they used to live in San Francisco and Marnie Thai was their, their mainstay, uh, mainstay, Iris, uh, but you live in New York now. So um, yeah, missing Marnie Thai, I would imagine. So very excited to hear the story and, and, uh, and seeing Chef Chai again. Uh, Chef Chai has two restaurants uh, named Marnie Thai, both in San Francisco. Um, so we will make sure to share uh, all of the uh, the links on how to get his cookbook and um, how to visit his restaurant as well. Uh, so here we are. This is a working kitchen. Um, and so, yeah, chef, tell us uh, if you could walk us through. I don't know if how easy it will be while you're while you're cooking, but I know rice noodles is the main component. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um... Pad Thai is one of the many Chinese noodle dishes that were influenced uh, by the Chinese dishes. And during the mid-15th century, uh, Chinese started to migrate to Thailand and they brought in the stir-fry cooking techniques to Thai people. So Thai people have uh, created this dish and uh, named it Hui Teo Pad Thai, which literally means Thai-style stir-fry noodles. The ingredients for this Pad Thai will be two parts. The first part is the Ingredients for starch, uh, protein, and vegetable. And the second ingredient will be for the pad thai sauce. Let me uh, walk you through this very important step in selecting. There are two kinds of uh, 
noodles, uh, rice noodles that you will find in the market here. The first one is the dry noodles, uh, which is imported from Thailand. And uh, you just follow the uh, instruction in the back of the package. Um, um, one tip that I would like to tell you is never uh, cook this dry noodle in, in boiling in hot water because it's going to ruin the uh, damage to your noodles and that it cannot be corrected. Your, no your pad thai will be soggy and will be very mushy. If you are using this uh, fresh dehydrated, which I have, which we are using this kind of noodle at the restaurant, this noodle has been made fresh and dehydrated, but before using it, you have to uh, reconstitute these noodles in warm water in order to bring back the moisture uh, of the noodles before using. So here is the noodle that I use uh, in my restaurant that have been uh, soaked in warm water and uh, you know, bring back the moisture. And then uh, let's take a look at other ingredients we have here. Uh, eggs, we have bean sprouts, we have green onion. So traditionally we use uh, Chinese chive, but since Chinese chive is not available all year round, so it's more practical to use uh, green onion uh, for most of the Thai restaurant. We have uh, tofu of bean curd here. I have a, a sweet radish of uh, preserved turnip. I have minced garlic, minced shallot. I have uh, uh, ground peanuts. I have a uh, Chili powder for extra spicy, and I have a prawn here. Traditionally, a pad thai comes with a dry trim, but nowadays you can, you know, uh, select any choice of your protein: trim, chicken, beef, or even pork. And the the next part is the ingredients for the pad thai sauce. The pad thai sauce is the building blocks of Thai food, which is the combination, the mixture of. Uh, fish sauce, which is the saltiness, uh, and the uh, coconut sugar, uh, regular white sugar, and also tamarind uh, concentrate, and also vinegar. The coconut sugar is the sugar that is made from the sap of coconut uh, palm tree. It is, it is uh, like natural sweetness, and it's indispensable for Thai food. You just mix all these uh, four or five ingredients, then you get a sauce. If you plan to do a full big group, then you can go ahead and uh, prepare this sauce in advance and put in the fridge for uh, you know many days, even up to a week. Okay. After, once you have these two ingredients ready, I will start uh, the first step in cooking. I turn on the heat. I add a little bit of oil. When the oil is properly hot, you crack an egg, crack two eggs. Then you add the fried garlic, salad, and tofu, and uh, sweet radish. After the initial cook half, uh, and this all cooks very fast, Chef, right? This is only just a few minutes. I don't know if you can hear me. The most yes, important I think in cooking pad thai you have to make sure that your, your noodles are soft and pliable before you add the sauce in. Because the sauce has sugar, it will caramelize the noodle. If you put the sauce in too soon, then uh, your noodle will be toughened and cannot be corrected. And then after that, you add your protein. I cook uh, the front half there for the rest of the because you know to expedite the cooking process. And then after that, you add uh, the, the, mix, the sauce mixture. After you add the sauce mixture, you keep cooking until the, the, the noodle absorbs most of the most of the sauce. Mm. 
making me hungry. I'm sure everyone at home okay, then is having the same. After that, you fold in your uh, bean sprout and green onion. And get ready to plate. You don't want to overcook the bean sprout. You want to uh, just kind of just half a cook because you want to have a uh, contrast of the uh, of the texture, of the crunchiness of the bean sprout, uh, the softness of the uh, noodles. And then you garnish with uh, peanuts and uh, chili powder. If you want an extra kick on that, and then uh, cilantro. Traditionally, we uh, serve pad thai with uh, banana blossom. We see the flower of the banana. It's loaded with uh, vitamin, uh, potent, uh, calcium, potassium, and magnesium, and also vitamin E, uh, copper, and uh, you know it's very it's like considered superfood in Southern Asia, and also some version or some uh, uh, you know, city in Thailand they also serve with the pennywort uh, leaf, which is also another healthy vegetable. So here you go, uh, my award-winning pad thai. Do we have enough time for any questions? I think we do have just a few minutes. That looks beautiful. And I, I can tell all of the balanced flavors of Thai cuisine, the sweet, salty, spicy, sour are all, are all in the dish. Um, uh, someone had a question about what um, that, that's chili powder at the bottom. Should, is that just for like sprinkling on top and mixing? Is that what you recommend with that if people like the heat? That is the chili powder, yes, and you can sprinkle that on top. Yes, yeah, no. Can't hear you. Okay. Right. Yeah. So okay. this is for you know extra kick if you want to have a spicy. So. And um, if you're cooking this at home, do you recommend pre-cooking the shrimp as well, or maybe that was a you mistake can, I made? I you can cook from uh, scratch. You know, you can start from. You don't have to do. You have. You don't have to pre-cook your protein because you have. You have enough time to do that, but for the restaurant right. style, we, we need to expedite the cooking process. So and of course, you make every single order that way. Uh, you make it all yeah, fresh. Right. So, yeah. so having pre-cooked protein certainly helps speed up time. Um, well, this was amazing. And I think this is a dish, like I said, that many people are familiar with many diners, but they might not understand how it's made or what goes into it. You know, I, I, how to, I hate to, um, out my mother, but if you asked her the main ingredient in Pad Thai, she might say peanut butter, which would be incorrect. So we're learning here, all of us together. Um, but chef, this was really, really wonderful. This was wonderful to hear your story and uh, hear about uh, how you've been involved in this sort of evolution of Thai cuisine in the United States uh, from the very early days up until now. And so, um, and there we see the restaurant, which is mostly operating to go and delivery, of course, during the current situation. Um, uh, I don't know if we could switch the camera to do a proper, uh, a proper thank you. Um, but, um, but this was really wonderful. If, if anyone has any other questions, uh, now's the time. But we have uh, shared with you, uh, Marnie Tai, uh, the link, the link to the cookbook. And um, Chef Chai, I, I just want to thank you. Oh, uh, Cindy asked if you're open during uh, the COVID time. Are you open for dine-in service right now? Uh, we only do the uh, takeout. We haven't been doing any dine-in yet. Uh, we're not ready. Yes, of course. Um, but it's good that you're able to do that and people can order. So uh, if anyone watching is, is close by <laughs> in San Francisco, uh, of course, you can order Marnie Tai's. Uh, you can order Sh Chef Chai's food from Marnie Tai. Uh, and, or you could try to cook it at home. You can order his cookbook and try yourself. Like, of course it won't be the same, but uh, it's a start until we're all back to normal. Um, Chef, I can't thank you enough. This was really, really wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, and it was really a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that was really, really wonderful. And, um, and again, I wanna thank Chef Chai, uh, but we'd like to introduce another chef 
uh, who has been on the scene here in the U.S. for a long, long time. Um, and she operates Thai Basil. She's won awards and has written quite a few cookbooks. You may have seen her on television. Um, Chef Nankran Dax, please uh, welcome to the program. Hi there. Good to see you. How are you? Hi. Fine. Thank you. Hi. Sabatika. Sabatika. Brian. Yes. Now you're uh, you're at home right now. Um, yes. <laughs> so not in a restaurant. So uh, although you do have the restaurant in Chantilly, and is is the restaurant open for dine-in or is it only takeout and delivery as well? Oh, well, maybe it's right a now. half of it. Um, we have half to of it. make the table, you know, much farther from each other. And of we course. are, you know, small restaurant before it can sit 80 people, but now we can sit maybe 40. <laughs> Right. Well, hopefully that will change soon, um, of course. Um, but we would love to hear more about your story. Uh, your, your entry into cooking is a little different, I think. It's an interesting story. So how did you, how did you first learn to cook and fall in love with it? Uh, actually, my, my parents separated and my mother moved to Bangkok with my younger uh, uh, siblings. And uh, my father took me to live with my half sister-in-law. It means my father married before and had children much older than, than, the, than, than us. And she was a caterer. So she, she have a free labor <laughs> from me. So she, she taught me how to do the curries and uh, she would put, uh, I don't know if you, you can see it here. Put all of the ingredients, I, you know, in modern yeah. pesto like this, but of course it's much bigger than this. And I suppose to pound and pound and pound, you know, so many curries each afternoon after school. So I hate it then because, uh, you know, I'm a child, eight years old, and uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's uh, a lot of my tears, you know, <laughs> went in my curry. <laughs> But you got strong moment, as well. You know, I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking I have to do it, you know, for room and board. So I had no other choice. That that's how it started. I had to cook then, but now I love I cook because I love to do it. I love to cook it now, but um, not then. <laughs> right. Well, sometimes we we enter into the thing we love in in unusual ways, I guess. Um, and so that sort of brings us to Thai basil because I know you love running the restaurant and, and cooking at least there. Um, how did that come about? How did you decide to get into the restaurant industry? Well, in 1993, you know, my husband, my husband is, uh, uh, was a diplomat so working, you know, in Beijing, China. And I uh, work at the, uh, I also work at the embassy at the medical unit. So one day I invited my boss and also my co-worker, you know, about eight of us to have lunch at my uh, apartment, you know, in walking distance uh, from where we were. And uh, I don't exactly remember what I cooked on that day, but um, first bite when my, uh, my boss, Thomas Yoon, Dr. Thomas Yoon, it, he said, no, you are in wrong business. You are in wrong business. You have to do something with your food. And that comment is really, you know, stick, stick in my head all the time. And um, so when uh, my husband retired in 1997, and uh, for two years, I was looking for a restaurant. And um, finally, you, you know, I, we purchased a failed Thai restaurant in the middle of nowhere called Chantilly. <laughs> it's not too far from uh, airport, but it's really at that moment, 20 years ago, it's really in the middle of nowhere. And uh, yeah, and so successful. Yeah, well, and congratulations. Um, but that must have been, I, I would think, quite a risk. I mean, you said it was a failed, it was a previous Thai restaurant. so. Were the diners who came pretty familiar with Thai food at the time, or was there a little uh, education you had to provide? You know, Washington, D.C. and Virginia is more or less like transit place. You know, a lot mm. of diplomats of, of, you know, all country in the world, you know, were there. And uh, a lot of people who 
served in Vietnam War, uh, you know, they, they pretty much know about uh, Thailand, but for the food, even though they might know uh, much more than people who live in the, the uh, what you want, central part of America or, uh, or in a small place, you know, they, they, know, they know very, very few names. The, the, the best thing they know is Pad Thai and drunken noodle and for curry, they may know three Panang, uh, red curry and green curry and that's about all. So, uh, but I try to, you know, introduce something new to them because I came from the South and uh, we do a lot of uh, curry. Like Chef Chai, you know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, Panang and Masaman curry and, you know, Kang Kai Kole, you know, came from that, from the southern part of Thailand. So, uh, so they, and you I, know, as we come along, we, you know, they know more because I teach the classes and do the catering also. Yeah, tell us, I know you teach classes uh, in, in Virginia and I guess DC, we have some photos of some of your classes. Uh, I'm sure things are a little strange right now during the pandemic, but was this a regular um, class that people could just sign up, uh, sign up for? Yeah, still people sign up and uh, I have kept their check. I said, I want to return. We have to wait until the COVID is over and you know when, when it be normal again. And then they can sign up. I said, no, 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 keep my check because you know I really wanted, to, <laughs> I really wanted to learn. So you know, it's a lot of fun, and um, uh, people love it. And I love teaching it. You know, it's it's a time to inter interact. You know, with other people, and uh, it's really it's a lot of fun. Uh, now speaking about interacting with other people, this isn't your first time on a screen, you've had quite a few television appearances as well. Yeah, you mean- Where you've been on, on the Food Network. Oh, I'm talking about on television. You've had a few oh, television oh, appearances. No, no, no. You know, I, I forgot to ask Bobby Frey, how did he find me? I told you from the beginning, <laughs> that, you know, we, <laughs> we, we are in the, in, in, in the middle of nowhere, you know, it's on the strip mall, which is about, 40 miles west of uh, Washington DC and teeny little restaurant from the street. You do not even see my restaurant. You have to really come in and people get lost. But anyway, <laughs> but we pray for me. <laughs> and uh, I forgot to ask how did he find me? And I always tell people that, you know, my restaurant is like the white elephant in the jungle. And I, I hate the expression of, you know, white elephant here because it means something useless, right? But in Thailand, it means a very good thing that hard to find. The matter of fact, if you, someone found white elephant in the jungle, you have to present it to the king and the king, you know, give the name and they would present, they give it to the zoo, you know, for children to enjoy. And so we are really elephant in the jungle at that moment. <laughs> But now it's yes. spread out. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And you were also on uh, uh, the next slide. Um, oh, well, here's the Pad Thai, um, which, of course, is what you uh, uh, competed against Bobby Flay and, and beat him with, uh, the Pad Thai. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and you've been on some other programs. And you've also written um, uh, a few cookbooks, correct? Yes, I wrote all together five cookbooks, you know, three small ones. One we, you know, uh, uh, the first one is in Beijing called uh, Secret of Thai Cooking. And then, you know, three more smaller ones. And the last one is Nong's Thai Kitchens. And uh, if I write another next one, I'm going to call Thai Cuisine Beyond Pad Thai. Ah, I love that, which actually <laughs> speaks to what, well, kun chai, to what kun you're chai wrote, you know, beyond curry. So, because, but I'm going to say, you know, my is beyond pad thai. <laughs> beyond pad thai. Well, yeah, and I think certainly in the last few decades, I know uh, personally, I, uh, the first time I discovered Thai food was in college uh, in, in the uh, late 90s, um, I guess is when 
it started at, at early 2000s, I guess, when it started appearing more in, in the US and it was Pad Thai, was all I knew. Uh, and it wasn't until much more recently that I discovered all of these wonderful dishes and thanks to people like yourself and Chef Chai and some of these other chefs that we're gonna feature later in the program have really kind of opened our eyes to the, the diversity uh, of what it can be. So, so yeah, thank you. I yeah, it's funny, you know, Pad Thai is only one of the dishes both foreigners or Westerners love, and Thai people also love Pad Thai. And, you know, in Thailand, of course, Pad Thai is on the street, and uh, you can have it any time of the day. But we usually eat noodles, which, you know, in the middle of the day, which is lunchtime, you know, we don't really eat Pad Thai, you know, in the evening. Right. And it's more of like a snack you get from a from a food cart or something, is what yeah. I understand. Uh -huh. um, so, oh, and someone, Nancy, uh, has your book, uh, Nong's Thai Kitchen, and, and highly recommends it. She says it's excellent. So we've dropped into the chat box uh, the link to purchase uh, uh, Chef Nong uh cookbooks. Um, but tell us about some of the other dishes. Uh, obviously, you make many dishes. We have a few photos of some of your other uh, signature dishes that we we should share here. Um, can you tell us about some of these that we're seeing? Oh, uh, that, uh, that tri-color pickle that I, you know, developed from, my friend have a Thai restaurant and she used broccoli flowers and she throw away the stems. So one day I was there and I asked her, you know, what are you going to do with those stems? She said, throw it away because American only like the flower, but not the stem. So I said, may I have the stems? I took it home. Oh. And I make pickle out of it and then um, it just stem, you know, it doesn't look so good with one color. So I add uh, uh, daikon, you know, the Chinese uh, radish That's and radish. also uh, carrot to make it very colorful. And uh, I gave it to her for her to taste. She said, oh my God, this is so good. How do you make it? So I told her the recipe. And after that, you know, I get, I don't get the stem anymore from her. So much for the good deed, huh? It <laughs> <laughs> looks beautiful. Uh, the magic, um, you know, today I have one to show you. <laughs> it's going well oh, with the yes. Oh yes, we're gonna talk about the curry in a, in a minute that you're preparing for us. Um, just some of these dishes are mouthwatering. This is uh, uh, banana leaves That's or no, this is uh, pandan leaves. Yeah, chicken, chicken meat marinade and wrap in pan pandan leaves and uh, dip in the sauce. It, it's uh, for appetizer. But Thai people, you know, you can, you know, you can eat the meat with the rice also. Sure. And, yeah, that uh, chicken wings stuff with crab meat and, you know, uh, chicken meat oh. and mushroom and carrots and, and few other things. Very typical. To, and that is the curry. The this is the curry we're gonna see today. Yes. This is the curry from southern part of Thailand. And today that is the curry that I wanted to show you. I hope I have enough time to show at least uh, until the chicken. Yes, please. In a well, why don't, we, why don't we move on to it? And, um, you know, I think it's interesting to see Chef Chai in the kitchen uh, moving very fast and, you know, as you do in a kitchen and you're at your home kitchen. So your family yeah. will be right. very lucky with, with the, yeah. <laughs> what you end up with. Yeah. So the name of the dish is Kang Kai Kole. Gang Kai Kole. Kole is from, Kole. from, yeah, from uh, Malayu, you know, language. It means uh, back and forth rocking. So originally, this is the marinade. You know, you make the curry paste and you marinate the chicken. You grill them, you know, like charcoal grilled chicken. But later, when we were in, in uh, Beijing, you know, I was very hungry for curries. And uh, uh, so I, I already know the recipe for the, uh, uh, for the marinade. So, but when you add, you know, more coconut milk in it, you know, make it, make the salt looser so you can make it into curry. And I wanted to um, show you how to make it. Uh, Please. But, and this recipe also is available in your book. So we've dropped yes. in those, yes. those links it's, to try to make it yourself. The, the pickle and, uh, you know, add the curry, you know, in my cookbook and you can order through Amazon. But if you go to my restaurant, I also have some at the restaurant. 
And I know your grandson, Nathan, is, is helping out here with the technical stuff. And we get a, a quick hello from Nathan. Uh, he's going to show us. So you're going to make the, you're going to start so, the curve. Um, you'll, um, you'll have to see that all of the ingredients in there is has, uh, this curry is the most, the easiest one of all. And uh, it's easy to like. Uh, even people who never had curry before and who didn't think would like the curry would like this curry. And, uh, you know, before I have, I have to, uh, you know, pow it like this. And the matter of fact, uh, in pounding this, in the, in the south, about four o'clock every afternoon, you know, uh, a young man who going to uh, looking for a girl to marry, he would go along the, in the windlass and hear the pounding. If you you hear pounding like this, you walk past by because this girl is a kind of lazy and didn't want to do. But if you, you go to the next one and you hear this, you ask for her hand, okay? That's how they pick the bride. But it's no longer that way because now we use this, the Western Modern pencil, that's what I call they it. They listen to the blender and the strength of the blender. Yeah, uh -huh. guys, you can ask a question right along. So we have- yes, please, and if anyone has any questions along the way, again, you can feel free to drop it in. Yeah, use a, okay. So um, seven of these peppers. And remember, this is a, a big, um, big, big curry. It's uh, good as a party dish. I put seven Thai chili there. And uh, if you could, this is a little bit harder to find unless you go to your know, Thai grocery store. But uh, um, Mexican pepper look just like this. It's called Puya. P-U-Y-A. I don't know how they pronounce it, but I pronounce Puya. Puya pepper. And then the 10 pounds of garlic, which is the whole bit of garlic. And um, the, the uh, yellow onion or red onion are uh, the uh, shallot, but uh, the red onion is very sweet. Uh, I call it purple onion because it looks purple to me. Um, toasted coriander seed, and then cumin. Everybody know cumin. And cinnamon, it's one teaspoon is and um, two teaspoon of uh, turmeric. Turmeric is, you know, in ginger family, uh, Indian use a lot of this. And one teaspoon of shrimp paste. That's all from Thailand, the shrimp paste. And then you put water in, a half a cup of water, and you blend it, and it would make a lot of noise. <laughs> Going to wake up your baby. Okay. Wait. Oh, yes. <laughs> um. There we go. And this probably not the right time to ask a question. I don't know if everyone can hear me, but you know, you could certainly buy curry paste in the store, but it's not, I mean, especially if you're using a blender, it's not as difficult as you might think to make your own paste three times, so it's about one minute or uh, one minute, 20 seconds. Fast forward, because we don't have much time, right? Fast forward, this is what I read earlier, exactly the same thing, but you bend it until very fine like this. And if there is uh, a few seeds of pepper, it's perfectly fine. So then we support to cook this with little oil first. Uh, maybe I use canola oil, about three tablespoons. Uh, chef, if you were to make a big batch, done, you, know, you can just pour it from here. Uh, if you were to make a big batch of that curry paste, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm wondering, paste. is that curry paste, does it stay good if you don't want to use all of it in one? Can you Since refrigerate the curry paste? Can you refrigerate the curry paste and use it again later, or should you make it fresh every time? Refrigerate and use it later. Oh yeah, of course. It's uh, you can keep it in the refrigerator for a week, but don't don't freeze it. Okay, 
because when you freeze it, you know, it, it, uh, when you bring it out again, it become very watery and no need to freeze it. So now you're supposed to, uh, what we call is to cook until it's fragrant. That's how, how, how it would say, you know, in Thai, Thai cookbook. But uh, this curry paste is, um, there is no commercial paste for Gang Kai Kole, so you more or less have to make your own. A lot, even in Thailand, a lot of people now, they just buy uh, uh, commercial curry paste. But one thing, it's, it is convenient and it might be cheaper to, to buy ready-made curry paste. So, but one thing not so practical is you cannot control the hotness of this. But here, after you make the first one, just like, just like I do it now, and um, you think it's too spicy, so next time you might reduce the amount of pepper. Let's say you're going to, um, to, to reduce to five pepper or three pepper, but if you do that, then the curry paste won't be, uh, the color of the curry won't look so nice because it's, it would be very pale, okay? So it's not very appetizing. So then you can add uh, pep, uh, pep, paprika, paprika to make the yeah. color. Yeah. So now... How spicy do you make it? How spicy seven when you're making it? Mild. Seven. This, this That's mild. Curry, this feeds eight people and it's very mild. And and I did not reduce the pepper, you know, just just you know for for Westerner. But this curry is mild, you know, in nature. So anyway, after you cook this until it's now, if you are here, you will smell this fragrance you know, already different from from the raw curry paste. So after after you cook this for a few minutes, then you put. Coconut cream. This is coconut cream. Uh, it's called coconut cream, and it's 19. Um, it's about two and a half cup. So you put in here. Let it um, come up to a boil. It's, it's, it's splash a little. So uh, I usually put this, you know, in the, um, in the Dutch oven. That's the best mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah. If you have, you know, a heavy, heavy lid pot. So with limit left like this, you just add little water and add it to the, so this more or less a curry paste. When it comes to boil again, you add the chicken. It looks beautiful. That color is very Yeah, this is the too. color look right, but if you reduce the pepper, you know, one time I taught a, a chef at one of the um, social function and I taught him how to make this because he wants to feed you know, 100 people. When I got there, you know, I did not <laughs> recognize my, my curry at all because he reduced to one pepper per recipe like this. So he oh, only no. used 10, you know, he used 10, you know, to feed 100 people. So, so I, I told him, you know, don't tell anybody that you learned this curry from me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm afraid, he said, he's afraid that, you know, people won't be able to eat. And I said, what do you mean? You know, you, you. <laughs> but uh, if he had consulted me, you know, I would tell him, you know, you put some you pepper in it just you know just uh, to give it the right. so at least it helps with the color <laughs> okay you certainly eat and with your eyes pardon i said you eat with your eyes of course you first eat with your eyes so that yeah. anyways yeah. it's not it we we do have another question though um from nancy uh she's wondering if you have a favorite brand of fish sauce 
she notices the blue bottle there. So uh, if you have any you know, advice um, on which plan. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the fix of, you know, I, I believe that everything, you should start with, you know, the best ingredient. And uh, this, and I always tell my students that, you know, you make Thai food, you use Thai product because the flavor would come out right. Or at least I know that the flavor will come out right. Um, now you see the curly paste is boiling. Then my chef is fish salt, you know, of course, the one that I use, this called Mecca Chef. It's such a big bottle, but they also have smaller bottles. But, you know, I use a lot. At the same time, you know, my curry, my curry paste is boiling. You see that? And has a very beautiful yep. color. And um, now I'm going to add the chicken in. And uh, oh, I guess my turn. Like this. You can put like 10 of these. So you can see it's and, a big pot of curry. And these are chicken thighs, yes? That's chicken thigh with bone, bone in. I, I, you know, it's always on sale. So this one, you know, it have the um, skin, I, you know, pull the skin off and then, you know, get it up. You can see even in the back, you know, I try to trim all of the fat. So, because this is a, so from now on, you know, you let it um, cook for about um, 45 minutes. I usually don't disturb or you know stir it. I usually check check the pot like this, check the pan like this, because I don't want it the meat to fall apart. But of course, right now you know it's still uh, uh, slow, slowly cook for about forty minutes. Uh, let me wash my hands first. Okay, uh, and if anyone. Try this. I I uh, am planning on making this this week for my family. I hope I don't. Uh, <laughs> hope I don't. Uh, I do a better job than I did with the pad thai, but uh, I'll, I'll try again if not. So you can try it yourself as well. Uh, you can reach out to Nongkrin. Uh, uh, shoot her a message uh, uh, through their uh, website, which we dropped into the the chat box. Or of course, you could you could pick up the cookbook and you'll get all of the recipes from that cookbook to try as well. Yeah. And so you have a. You have a finished version of this as well, I think, right? Is that yeah. the yeah. magic of Zoom? The, uh, yes. Why that? Oh, what did you? What did you ask me? I, I did want. I did also want to mention something that Karen posted in the chat box. She said that your book gives a lot of great information about ingredients and sauces and cook how to cook rice. Uh, so um, she says there are shortcuts for making some of the condiments used by the Thai with many dishes. So uh, she is highly recommending it as well. So we've got a lot of a lot of fans um, of the cookbook. So everyone else should, should check it out as well. Um, so I think before we finish, I know you wanted to show us quickly how you cut the vegetables that you add as well. I know yes, we're running close to time. The vegetable, you know, it's um, I, if I have little. Um, what happened to my pillow? Mm, excuse me. Sure. No, my time, no. So this is, you see how different this is, cooking at home versus cooking in a restaurant where you have, you know, everything set up for, yeah. for everyone. So, you so know, my, is... my mother always said, you know, when you do something, you might as well, you know, do it pretty because it take about the same time. This is a papaya peeler, but I like, you know, to peel my vegetable with this. And it, so this is how I cut tradition. Of course, this uh, curry is um, uh, adapt from the uh, barbecue, so they don't have any uh, vegetable in it. But potato, you know, it tastes so well in the curry. So you see, I got each thing, I got six pieces at about equal size, cut very prettily with that. And you know, the carrot, you, you, you want to do the same thing, it would be 
she had this very pretty. And uh, I cut the same way when I do the pickle. So, but you can just, you know, regular slide, but I think it's much more interesting this way. And, um, okay, let pretend that the chicken is already cooked 45 minutes. So yeah, you we'll fast forward. <laughs> yeah, right. Fast forward, fast this, forward. So you put this in, it takes about 15 minutes before it's done. And when it's done, you put the seasoning in, okay? But I cannot put in there now. I just I want to show you. We have to put in like five tablespoons of tamarind juice. This is tamarind, called tamarind paste, or this one called wet tamarind. Come from Thailand. That one come from India and some from uh, somewhere in the in other country, but. Like I said, the one that come from Thailand, it just have you know the right flavor. So we and break up you know, a small two. piece, about two tablespoons, and you soak in like one third cup of water because we need five tablespoons. So you you squeeze it like this and uh, remove the um, the palm, and if some of the palm is go in there, it really does matter because it's edible anyway, okay? So I have the one that I made, you know, earlier, just to show you. So throw this out, put it in there. And um, so you need, at, let's say after the chicken, after 45 minutes cooking the chicken, 15 minutes later, you put this vegetable in, and uh, before it's done, you put five tablespoons of this tamarind. It looks like prune juice. It's about this uh, consistency, you know, not so thick, not so thin. There is one can, the one tamarind juice that comes in a can. It's very, very thick, and I have never used that, but some of my students forgot to dilute it and she said she had to throw away the whole pot of curries and that really a shame because um, I, I prefer to break small piece and use it this way. And uh, I use it fast because, you know, I also use to make, you know, my pad thai sauce also need this. Right. So it's well, you can keep definitely, you know, in refrigerator. And when you go to buy, you know, if you have a choice, you look at the color. If the color is uh, a kind of reddish brown, that would be uh, newer. I mean, it has not been on the shelf too long. But uh, oh, if you keep it outside, it it would turn black more or less. It's still you still can use, but you know, like it's not as fresh. And then the palm sugar. The palm sugar is you know like this. But before you use it, you have to put. A little bit of water, let's say uh, this much of water, and you put in microwave. This is about four tablespoons, but we only need two. So if you put in microwave, it gets soft, and so you can break off, you know, a half of it for this. And um, how do we do with the time? So this is. We're, I think we're we're pretty we're pretty much at time, but we'd love to see the finished. Do you have yeah, the finished dish? The finished dish uh, this, is, this is a chicken curry that I made earlier. And um, it's, you can see that, you know, because I don't stir it and, and disturb it sometimes. So it's still, you know, nice, nice big piece. And, um, you know, I, actually I have more sauce. I put a bit more sauce in, no? Okay. And the rice, I, you know, I, I like to, this one, you know, I mix jasmine rice and, you know, with the uh, organic red rice and the pickle, uh, tricolor pickle and cucumber pickles, you know. We oh. usually eat with this. Oh, so it's a big pot of curry and um, I hope you can, today you eat with your eyes, but yes, that's what this I weekend saying. you can make it and, <laughs> and enjoy well, it. I will, report, I will <laughs> report back and... Uh, I hope uh, I hope everyone who's who's viewing today uh, either makes their way to to Thai basil 
or tries their hand at Chef Nong Krin uh, and Chef Chai's uh, two wonderful dishes uh, and more today. So this was really, really wonderful. Uh, Chef Nong Krin, thank you so, so much for your time and for sharing um, this uh, beautiful recipe with us that I, I have no doubt is uh, incredibly Thank delicious. you so much for inviting thank me. You so and much. I wanted to thank uh, uh, you people and all of the Thai food lovers anywhere in the world, <laughs> even in Thailand. Yes. And also Indeed. thank you, Nathan, my favorite cameraman. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're right. He's going to have it for lunch today. <laughs> and if Chef Chai is still is still viewing, um, it would like to come back on and say a proper uh, farewell. I don't know if he's still. We didn't talk about this, so it's okay if he is. Oh, I think we hear him coming back. Um, maybe slowly. Um, well, maybe maybe he'll come back and, and say goodbye. But I, there he is. I, I want to thank you both. Uh, this was really wonderful to learn your stories and learn about how. Thai cuisine has, has evolved into uh, such a wonderful, um, I mean, it's always been a wonderful cuisine, but we understand it to be that now, you know, in, in the US. And uh, thank you so, so much uh, for- Thank you so this. much. Uh, it's a fun experience for me. And, you know, um, uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to, uh, you know, to be part of this program again. Yeah. Well, thank you both. And thank you all for viewing today. We hope you join us uh, and check out both Marnie Thai and Thai Basil. And please join us for some of our upcoming programs. Next Monday, we're gonna be talking about uh, Thai immigration and uh, cooking Thai food for both new and familiar audiences. And then the following Monday, we're gonna delve more into two of the regional cuisines, uh, Northern and Southern Thai cooking and see what that is all about. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I'm sure you're all starving like I am. So, so go enjoy and, uh, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.